and uh, let me share the screen. So last time uh, we were like uh, having the conversation about the uh, uh, the internet related services, right? So uh, today we are going to continue from that particular point onwards, right? So let me take the note and uh, Yeah, so, so far in the uh, first unit, uh, we are like uh, discussing what are data and information, right? And the data life cycles, the characteristics, right? And uh, the concept of big data and why we use the information and uh, how information are being uh, disseminated or distributed, right? And the uh, drawbacks and the benefits drawbacks of the manual system, manual data storing uh, systems, and the benefits of the computerized uh, data storing methods, right? And we talk about the internet, right? And the related services. That was the part we were discussing finally in the session, right? So today we are going to talk about the World Wide Web, which is the uh, most famous service in the internet so you now you know when we are talking about the internet it is uh, it's it's a collection of a services right like uh, world wide web email file sharing right uh, file transferring uh, those kind of one telnet right we talk about those services uh, previously the other day right and today we are going to talk about the World Wide Web, which is the famous one uh, in the internet, right? So the World Wide Web, uh, like, uh, came into being like uh, 1991, like it was, it was not there before that particular day, right? Uh, for to be used by the public, right? So the Tim Burns Lee is the one who. Uh, developed the www and today it is uh, maintained by the uh, world wide web consortium which we call the w3c right and uh, now when it comes to the uh, world wide web now it's uh, this particular thing describes how how the world wide web uh, happens i'll give you a, a small short note regarding how these things have been uh, created right okay let me take the uh, whiteboard all right then i will uh, draw this and this will this is going to be the short note of the uh, world wide web for you people so later you are going to draw it with me right like draw it with me means draw it after me right so yeah, now just a second, I need to uh, assure whether this is your correct whiteboard. Give me a second, people. Um, uh, I'll just uh, name this and it will be okay. Right. So now, in the first day, I told you we had this. Uh, we have this fourth. Uh, actually, the thirteen theory lessons. Theory lessons means the thirteen lessons to be learned, and we are going to discuss the web designing at the as the tenth lesson. Now, this internet is based on this web designing. The web designing is the place where we give the birth to the websites which is going to be a part of the World Wide Web later, right? So I'll give you a quick summary regarding that, 
right so you will be able to uh, take that particular picture now we use the uh, programming language you know the pro not actually the programming language we use the we use a markup language called html right so html we call this hypertext markup language now this markup language is like a building blocks so, so we are given the block already so using those blocks we are going to make something for us right the programming language ekakai markup language ekakai thiyena wenasa programming language ekak kiyala kiyanne hariyata me geyak hadanna apita deela thiyena me vali tika wage vali tika wage right etter vali tika apita kamathi vidihata ehata mehata karala apita kamathi model ekak hadanna puluwa but when it comes to the built in blocks anyway we have to use the blocks to create a right in this case don't think about a lego lego ekak wenas I'm talking about the uh, the basic building block. For the idea of it, because now we go carry carry the idea. So so like those in into a cube, right? So the cubes. But let us add another one. Had a time. I have to add another one. Another one. So markup language is something like that. So in HTML, we are given particular tags. When you come to the tenth lesson, you will get to know what are the tags are. Right? With that. Uh, we are going to write an html code right so this is going to be an html code right i'll give you a simple example for a tag html so this is the way uh, that the tag works don't think about it for the moment right so this is called the html file right once we code with the html when we render it or when we convert it we are receiving a web page right so web page may have some name right and some pictures right and some contents right so this is a call web this is called a web page right this is html document it's better say html code and it will give you a web page now when you are surfing right now if i visit to my website right uh, this is my website so this particular thing is made out of html now you can view the source code or the html code of any website by right clicking on this and uh, selecting this view page source tab right so this is going to be an html page right so okay output ekak thamai ogalanta me peyenna thiyenne right and we are not going to work with the html code but the output that we are seeing the metan ta aapu welawe man ogalanta ogalange online classes wala recordings thiyena tarak chuttak ehema kiyala yanna this is the place you have to visit to find the recordings uh, of the online sessions that we do right so <coughs> the website name is starlabs.lk <clears throat> inside that you got a tab called lesson recording so inside that there are several kinds of recordings in starlabs recording you have to uh, choose the starlabs recording so the recording page is like this so you are recordings are at the top of the page a level 2023 english medium sessions right so this is the uh, last week session that you can see right and uh, you have a, a, a button called hamburger button uh, at your right 
uh, top corner right so once you click on it you can uh, view what are the uh, previous recordings that we have so the latest recording will be at the top and the previous recording according to the order uh, will be listed down right then other recording right so you can click on any of the recordings and you can prefer what we have uh, discussed so far right okay so um, I was talking about this, uh, how the how, how a web page is going to uh, create, right? So using HTML code, we can create a web page and uh, creating uh, many different web pages. Yeah, that's my daughter. And uh, you will be getting these kind of discussions. So, so, that is doing a class. <laughs> okay. Yes, I love you. Right, sorry for that. Uh, she is with me, and uh, you will be having the same disturbs disturbance, right? So, when you when you have the web pages, right? Uh, I will name this as the home page, and uh, some web pages with some content, right? You can just uh, draw it, right? So. Uh, Right now, these web pages have the links with each other. Right? So these are called hyperlinks. Right? So when uh, different kinds of web pages are linked with each other, we call that particular set as a website so this is called a website right so collection of websites collection of websites will create World Wide Web, right? So that is the picture, right? So these are the website. So collection of those will create a World Wide Web. So hypertext markup language is the coding language that we use to create a web page. So collection of web page will create a website and collection, collection of websites will create the www which we call world wide web, right? And uh, inside the world wide web, now what we are doing is like, uh, when, we, when we need to access to a website, this particular website is there in a one particular computer in somewhere in the world, right now. If you, if you think about the uh, google.com, right, where the Google is there, I'll show you the Google server for the Google, where the Google is. Now, uh, yeah. So this is the server room. Right now, this particular room is one big giant computer, right? Which is not an old one, which is a very high tech and high performance one, which is, this is called the server room. And this holds all the data that we are referring through the Google, right? It is somewhere in the America. 
So <clears throat> when we need to connect with the google.com through a browser, we are just typing a URL to get connect with this particular server room or the computer, right? So generally, generally, uh, a computer which holds a website is called web server, right? So there will be this computer. which holds a website. And it is called a web server. Right? And this web server is always connected with the internet. Right? So from the other end, we can connect our desktop or laptop or whatever the device which has the facility to get connected with the internet can access the website, right? So this is going to be the personal computer. Or, or a device, right? Right, so that's what basically happens. So when we create a website, we have to put it inside a web server, right? So big companies like Google, Facebook, Instagram have their own web servers. And if we, now as an example, my website, this website is maintained in a shared host. Shared host, there are companies who will rent as a space of their servers to host our website. Servers companies business server space rent Right? So I rent that space and I upload my website to that particular space. So everyone in the world can see that particular space in the, in the shared server. So that means they can see my website. Right, so that is what happens. So servers, there are uh, there are there are there are dedicated servers and shared servers. Right. Anyway, those are called a web server. Right. Okay. Did you got the picture? Terunada, komo the meka venne kiela. Worldwide web headila tiyeni komo the kiela. Yes, sir. Right. Great. Okay. Right, now I, I want you to uh, uh, take this down to your book, right? And uh, the newcomers, Pigawa, the newcomers, like Nick, can I? Ethan, you are a newcomer, right? Yes, sir. Yes, and uh, Sachintani, uh, you were there, you were there in, from the beginning, right? Lalindi and Nikini, I notice you guys. Right, uh, Ethan, uh, the way we have done this is like uh, we maintain, uh, we have separate note in the tube and mm -hmm. we are uh, maintaining a short note on our notebooks, right? Yes, so we are doing two lessons parallelly with uh, uh, the first lesson and the third lesson. Third lesson uh, okay. is a calculation one. So uh, uh, you may like Lalindi uh, Dua, like. Uh, how many pages that we have to wake on for the uh, previous parts? So like uh, how many pages do I like roughly? Four to five CR pages? Three pages for first lesson from a CR book, right? Ah, okay. Ethan, uh, you may leave three pages uh, if you okay. get our book right then you can continue from uh, right here right okay right. and people uh, it's better you uh, have some heading uh, for this like saying uh, www which is world wide web right so the language is hypertext markup language so carry on
and I'll uh, minimize uh, the screen for you to see it uh, clearly and I will scroll down. I'm moving up a little bit. And uh, for the last one, it's better you uh, write this. Uh, Uh, 
and in this laptop it's better you say www.abc.com Just write this on a one line paper. But I'm going to need to write this on a one line. Right. And you name it as the URL. I'll tell you what it is. Let me know when you are done, people. Okay, one is done. Done, sir. Okay, so two are done. How about others? Okay, Nikini is done. Sachin Tani, how about you do?
right great okay let's uh, go back to the lesson yeah now uh, <clears throat> now when we are uh, trying to view a website we need a software called browser right and you know what is a browser right you have already had the experience regarding that, like Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Safari, Opera, right? There are many, many browsers uh, in the world. So you can, <clears throat> using any browser, you can connect into the World Wide Web, right? And when you are connecting to the World Wide Web, you are using an address called URL, which is called the Uniform Resource Locator to get connect with this particular website because uniform resource locator is the one which tells to which particular resource that we need to get connected with through the browser, right? So without a URL, you won't be able to connect. Now, if you know the URL uh, directly, then you can type the URL right over here, right? So if you know Google dot, if, if, like we, if you know what's the name of the uh, website, we can just say uh, the name of it. Like I am typing uh, my website. So I know it's startups.lk, right? Now, now, nowadays the browsers are not uh, requesting you to type www dot and all these things. It's just the uh, name of the uh, website without www because they, no, through a browser, we are mostly going into a website. So www is added by them. So like uh, pressing start labs.lk will take you there. And if you press on the uh, URL, you can see there is a www, uh, which is given automatically uh, from the browser, right? And uh, now URL, is something like this. Now, this particular picture explains what I have explained to you earlier about the links and the, uh, I, I couldn't tell you about the home page. Now, home page is the page that present us when we type the, uh, the name of the website or the uh, domain name of the website. Like if you say www.google.com, everyone gets a same page, which is a, a web page which, with, with the search engine. And if you type www.facebook.com, you will be getting the login page, right? And if you if you like like if you type any web address, just indicating the website, it will give you a one particular page, which is called the home page. And home page is having the links to all other pages, right? Now, as an example, the famous uh, e-learning platform, which is eTaxalab. So if we type uh, eTaxalab, I really don't remember what's the URL. So uh, what we are doing when, when we don't know about the URL, we just search it, right? Now, Chrome itself, search if we uh, give some particular name, right? So, so this is the search list that you are going to receive through a, a web browser, right? And uh, these are the links that you can receive. Right, so these links means everything specify a URL. URL is at the top of the link, right? Yeah, people just, uh, excuse me for a moment.
right so uh, <clears throat> yeah so this is the etaxarava and url you can see at the top of it right and earlier it was the url that we were asked to click now it is the uh, name or the home page name so when we click on this we will we will be directing to the home page of the etaxarava so this is the home page right and uh, these menus and uh, all these uh, pictures they are acting as you uh, the hyperlinks that i told you right so hyperlink can be a word can be a phrase or can be a picture right uh, so those are the types right so likewise uh, we can like uh, go here and there inside a website right so what you can see over here is the url right so as you can see it is uh, starts with an https right uh, and colon double slash www then dot e dash dot moe dot gov dot lk and it says slash web slash en right so i'm going to copy this because uh, need this when I'm uh, discussing the URL. Right. Oh my god, no, not this one, not this one. Yeah, just a moment, people. All right, now it's something. All right, okay. Oh, for some reason, it's not getting uh, wasted. Yeah, it is just, uh, it's not just giving me that particular thing. So we'll go with the uh, one in your book. Am I just a moment, huh? just a moment. Right, uh, sorry for that, people. <laughs> right, so this is the uh, URL. Uh, so in a in a, a much descriptive manner, right? So here I have uh, shown you it is starting from HTTP colon double slash www dot example dot com colon eighty slash something something is there, right? So all you have to uh, uh, like bother about now. This is a very descriptive one, right? I'll summarize this to you, right? 
So <clears throat> what you have to be worried about or worried about means like there are major parts that you need to uh, concentrate on this regarding this thing, right? So you have to concentrate on the protocol, right? If a URL is given, you should be able to recognize the protocol. So protocol uh, for a web address, it is always, it is not always, it is HTTP or this has another version called HTTPS. It is the secured version of the HTTP, right? Now, uh, if you could remember in the Etaxala web address, they were uh, showing us the HTTPS one right over here, right? So there are two versions when it comes to the uh, protocols, which is HTTP and HTTPS. Either of uh, the protocol will be there, not the both, right? And the protocol and the domain. Now, domain means the entire thing, starting from www dot something dot, and there will be some words, right? So until, according to this particular address, until the colon, but in most of the address, it is until the slash, right? Then uh, if you look into the Ethaxalava web address, so it is HTTPS is there and www is there, right? Uh, let me uh, take the magnifier for you so it will be easy for you to see. Yeah. Yeah, this is the way it goes. Let me click on this. Yeah. So HTTPS, then colon, double slash. So www dot. Yeah, change you know. So we'll keep it like this. Then we'll try to capture. Yeah, www.ethaxalava.mov.gov.lk slash. So at the end, you can see a slash right over here, right? So that entire thing is called the domain, right? So inside the domain, there are different things, right? There are different sectors, right? Let me close the... Uh, Magnifier, right? So this is called the www part is called the subdomain or the service, right? And example.com, we call it the root domain, or sometimes we call it domain name. The dot com part in here is called the top level domain or the TLD. And when you are having uh, several dots after the, uh, uh, the name of the web address, we call the entire thing as effective TLD, right? And the very last part in this example, this entire thing is called the effective TLD. And UK part is called the top level domain, right? Effective top level domains are there, there are many. So the very last part is called the top level domain, TLD, right? And uh, from path to the very last slash, right? The metronome slash so the entire thing can be uh, called as the path, right? <clears throat> Make query string anchor, those are some advanced things, right? So it's better you uh, 
consider them like the entire thing as the path me me sampoona kotase yata passe thiyena tika eko a poduwe you consider it as path all right <clears throat> now if we are referring to some resource like a pdf or a picture or kind of a thing so that will be there at the very end indicating the resource right so let me show you an example now if i go to my website now in the ict lessons i have something called git so in the GIT, I have uploaded some notes regarding the GIT, right? So now look at my uh, web address, right? Let me take the magnifier again, right? Look at my web address. So it starts, uh, it is said not secured because I don't have the HTTPS, only the HTTP that I have. So HTTPS, I have to pay and take. So that is why it is said not secured. So these are the things I have. Starlabs.lk, so www is there, slash images, slash GIT resources. Now slash images slash GIT resources is the path. And my PDF name is not for students dash GIT ENG. Team 2017.pdf. It's, it's, it's rather a lengthier name, right? But it's the last part of the URL. So this is called the resource. It's a PDF. So before that, it is the path images slash GIT resources, right? So those are the major parts of a uh, URL, right? So I want you to uh, <coughs> like uh, write a particular, uh, another different uh, URL on your short note. I wrote it, write it for you and we'll uh, uh, name the things there right so let me uh, take a copy of this particular thing let's see uh, Oh no, they are still doing the uh, old thing. Let me take a notepad and uh, first uh, paste it there. Great, it's not working. Let me take a photo of that thing. Oh, yeah, brilliant. And let me change this uh, big thing into a shorter one.
So here we are talking about a URL. So this this entire thing is called a URL. This is called the protocol. There can be two versions, which are like HTTPS. And this is called the service. And this is called Hold on a second, people. Just a second, I need to uh, confirm one thing. Hold on. Service or subdomain. Yeah, this is called domain name. And the LK is called top level domain and from here to here is called path to a resource right and this is called the resource. Right. Write it down, people. Oh yes, there is another thing. Uh, let's uh, write about the root domain as well. Root domain ka kela kya ni mid din natama.
right, the yellow. Let me know when you are done, people. Right, Pahan Midwa. Pahan me, we were, uh, we start the session at 11.30. Uh, recording Neka Tienwa, do product recording Neka Rita Karana. Right, Apidam me, Mename Irem Palleha Tienetika, the idea in. Right, two are done. I'll give some time to Pahani as well. None. Sir. Okay, okay, three are done. Right, people, just a second. I'm getting a call from the school regarding the online sessions.
Right. Sorry for that, people. I will be getting disturbed uh, like for these two, three weeks because online sessions have been again uh, activated in school. So ICT teachers have to attend those things like when the call comes, right? So stay with me. So uh, we uh, talk about the uh, URL. So we are done with the URL. So um, uh, then we have like mobile communication and mobile, mobile computing, something very uh, uh, easy for you to understand, right? So like mobile communication, like it is something that we uh, already experience in like for so long, right? So mobile communication, when it, when it's a mobile communication, it indicates no wires involved, right? So this is about having the communication uh, like uh, in, a, in a mobile manner, right? So it, it means we are doing the communication without the wires, right? So it, it specifically focus on the uh, non-wired devices or the wireless devices, right? And when, it, when, when we are saying mobile communication, again, it is focused on the communication which is done, in, done by the mobile devices, right? So for, to do that, uh, there are different kinds of techniques that they are using for by names like uh, TDMA, uh, time division multiple access and uh, CDMA, code division multiple access and FDMA, frequency division multiple access. Like you don't need to like uh, uh, know what these things are, but just uh, know there are like uh, three, type of, three types of ways that we are doing the, uh, uh, the mobile communication. Right. So with the mobile communication, there is another term which has been introduced, which is called the mobile computing. Now, mobile computing means now what you and me are doing here is a mobile computing. Right. Now I am uh, uh, doing my lesson through the uh, uh, through my laptop. If you are listening to it uh, through a mobile phone, we are doing mobile computing. Right. So we are communicating not just the words, but the uh, audios, videos, data, and all these things through the mobile devices. Again, when it says mobile computing, it specifically says about the uh, computing happens in between mobile devices, right? Now, remember that, right? Now, it, like, like you can't involve a particular desktop or, or, or non-mobile device into this particular concept, right? So it is said this is a technology that allows transmission of data, voice and video via a computer or any other wireless enabled device without having to be connected to a fixed physical link, right? And, and, and correction, uh, you can take desktop and all these things, but uh, your internet connection shouldn't be a fixed one. It should be a mobile one. like using a wireless device or something, right? Oh. People, I'm very sorry. I'm being disturbed uh, by the school teachers. Just give me a second, right? Hello. All right, and when it comes to the cloud computing, it is a one new separate concept, right? So when we refer into a cloud, it refers to the internet or a very big network, right? Now, cloud computing is a place where it gives you the services using the cloud or using the internet, right? Now, the difference of cloud computing and the general computing, For to do the general computing, we need a computer device and all the things with us, the electricity, the cables, the monitors and the devices, all these things are uh, going to be with us. Like the, everything that we need is going to be with us in our computer. But when it comes to the cloud computing, most of the things, most of the things are provided by the cloud or the internet, right? Now, 
the way they are providing the services, they have separated this cloud computing into three different services, right? So they say infrastructure as a service, which is we say IAAS or EAS, right? And uh, then they say platform as a service, which is PAAS or PaaS, and software as a service SAAS or SaaS, right? So these there are three major uh, services. Now let's get clarify what these things are. Now infrastructure as a services. Now now think about your computer at home. What is the infrastructure that is uh, around your computer? Uh, you need the electricity to power up your computer, right? If it is a laptop, still you need the electricity to charge it, right? And if you are if you are connecting your computer, like if you're connecting two computers together at your home, you need the network cables and switch kind of a device kind of things, right? Uh, so uh, those are called the infrastructure. Right, and when you are saving the things, it gets saved on into your hard disk. Right, it is an infrastructure which helps us to store the data. Right, so each and everything, as I told you before, in general computing, each and everything, the infrastructure is with us. Our electricity, our storage, our network cables, everything comes with the like in 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 our expense. Right, but when it comes to the cloud computing they are providing some of the facilities or some of the infrastructure from the cloud, right? Now, if you think about a place like Google Drive, right? Google Drive is a free cloud storage that is given by the Gmail or the Google Corporation for us to store things on their particular space. Now, when we store things in the Google Drive, it is not storing in our computer hard disk. It is storing on the cloud, that means in the internet, uh, at somewhere else, not in our local computer. So storage is provided by the cloud. So infrastructure is given, right? And uh, uh, it, when, when you, when you uh, think about a device with a cloud storage, you really don't need uh, this uh, uh, the system unit and all these things, right? Oh, I'm sorry, people. I have to attend into these things, right? Please excuse me. Right, so I'm um, sorry. So we were talking about the infrastructure. So storage is given to us. Now, I think you have seen a Google Drive. I'll show you mine, right? Uh, uh, this, is, this is only for given the people who are using the Gmail as their uh, email account. So here I am storing a lot of things, right? In these folders and uh, even the, out of the folders, I have uh, so many different data in many different formats. So it is a storage for me. So that means it is provided me the storage, the infrastructure. And again, if I need to share something with someone else, that means like when we are having the network facility, we can have the facility of sharing the things. So when we are doing the cloud computing, still we are given that facility without the network arrangement of our computer. For that moment, we only need the internet. We don't need network cables and all these things to connect my computer with the other computer physically, right? So it is provided by the cloud and the network arrangement is done by the cloud. So again, the infrastructure is given to you, right? So likewise, uh, cloud computing is giving us the service by providing the infrastructure, right? And when it comes to the uh, platform as a service, now in the computing, we basically talk about, like when we say platform in computing, we're talking about the operating system, right? Uh, why we call the operating system the platform, without the operating system, other softwares will not be able to 
installed, get installed. Because operating system is the very first software which is loaded into your computer when you are powering it up, right? But when you are having the cloud computing facility, you really don't need an operating system installed into your device. It is there in the cloud. So we, what we're doing is we are just connecting. We are just connecting with the cloud through internet connection, right? So cloud will open and will give us the facility or the appearance of an operating system, right? In very near future, your devices will be based on specifically when it comes to the mobile devices will be based on the cloud uh, computing services. Now, uh, Google uh, Corporation are maintaining a cloud computing service called the, uh, uh, the Chromebooks and these uh, uh, Google Pixel in the, in the Google Pixel phones, right? They are just uh, referring to the uh, cloud computing facilities in most of the ways, right? So very soon, all other devices will uh, uh, adapt into that particular thing, right? So, the cost for the softwares will be reduced, but in some ways, it's going to be a problem. Now, if you, if you think about the rural area of our country, we won't be able to find a very good internet connection in those places, right? So then it is going to be a problem. But again, the, 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 the companies who are proposing the, uh, Google Co like, like the cloud computing services will uh, have some solutions for that as well, right? So platform, uh, that means basic, uh, the majorly the operating system is provided by the cloud. And if you think about the other softwares which helps the platform like antivirus software, we call them the utility softwares, right? So if, if you are taking your computer as an example, you have to install an antivirus software into your computer by your own. But if you think about the cloud computing, they have their own virus guard or the antivirus software established in the cloud. So it is given us as a service. So again, that is going to be a platform as a service. And if you're thinking about programming, uh, like we, we, are, we are going to talk about programming in the ninth lesson using the Python programming language. So when we are learning the Python programming language, we have to install the programming language into our computer. And then it, the computer will allow us to build the source codes or the build the programs. But when we are doing the cloud computing, cloud itself will provide us the development uh, facilities or the development environment, right? We don't need to install the things uh, for the uh, uh, device, cloud has them all, right? So those are called platforms, which is a service given by the cloud. And uh, very, uh, and, and, and hold on, uh, I, I'll show you uh, how the Google has uh, uh, provide us the platform as a service. Now, now, when we need to access a file in our computer, we go to this file explorer, right? So this file explorer is the place uh, which gives us the uh, ability to access to the places in the hard disk, right? So this file explorer is given by the operating system. Without the operating system, you won't be able to see these files and this uh, computer, the, like, like this, this structure, these deviations, you won't be able to see that. And do you remember the Google Drive? Google Drive has the same structure. See, it got folders, it has files. Like if you open a one particular folder, there are subfolders, right? So there is a, a recycle bin, right? And the uh, recent places. So it is again, something similar, which is given by an operating system, right? The same environment. So it is the way that it is given us the platform as a service, right? And in, in, in their apps, I remember they had something for developers as well, right? Uh, let me, let me, let me. Uh... Yeah, these are the application. This is, this is the next one that I'm going to talk actually. Uh, software as a service, then maybe the no and pain at the enemy software is there, right? So, uh, 
they have uh, docs which is something very similar to the word documents sheets something as excel and uh, forms and slides something like uh, powerpoint right i'll show you the things right and hold on uh, when we visit to the uh, google products i remember they got something for developers as well um, I really don't remember what was the application which was uh, providing us the facility to do the programming uh, with that particular one, right? Uh, yeah, now you can see something here, where OS by Google, right? So that is regarding the uh, wearable devices, the operating system for wearable devices. I cannot find uh, the, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, for developers right and for developers if i uh, extract this we can see the admob the analytics it's it's again uh, analyzing tool android development google map platforms right so there are many for the developers the web right so this developing part belongs to the platform right there are yeah, they are providing a place for us to build something, right? And then the very last uh, facility of the service that they are given us is the software as a service, right? So when we are having the software as a service, like, like the computer is having uh, uh, softwares, the cloud is giving us a lot of software. So these are the software list that we can use through the Google Cloud. Right. Even though this uh, Google Drive is not entirely a cloud platform, entirely a cloud computing uh, uh, service, but it, it, or it, it is like almost there, right? Let me Chromebook in a, a computer as well to give right? If you're using a Chromebook, Chromebook is purely based on the cloud computing, right? When you are opening the uh, computer, you are connected with the Chrome browser. Uh, like you will feel that you are uh, uh, in a in a in a uh, that you are using a normal computer, but it is uh, connected with the cloud. It needs the internet connection to work, and uh, will be communicated, and will be used these kind of things, right? Okay, so those are the facilities that we can uh, talk regarding the cloud computing, right? Okay, uh, so shall we uh, summarize these things up, right? So I'll draw it for you over here. And uh, you may do the summarization. So first I'm going to tell you about the mobile, com mobile communication. You can draw it with me, right? Mobile communication. Right, so there will be a one mobile device. There will be another mobile device, so likewise. Uh, when it comes to the mobile communication, it's better we uh, just uh, draw just two mobile devices. And these two are communicating the voice, right? And when it comes to the mobile computing, and uh, the critical part is the cloud. And there will be mobile devices like mobile phones, uh, 
props. Tablets. Right. So these will be connected with each one of us, right? Uh, through the cloud. So that is what we call mobile computing. Right, so first go through the mobile communication, then comes to the mobile computing. And it's better you write uh, within the brackets. Communicating wirelessly. And here, computing wirelessly. Right, uh, so meanwhile, I'll uh, draw the cloud computing thing as well. So like, uh, I'm going to just talk about the uh, services that it provides and the, uh, uh, the examples that we can have, right? So, Cloud computing. There are three major parts, which is infrastructure as a service and platform as a service and software as a service. So, infrastructure as a service 
we are talking about providing storage providing network and platform as a service providing an operating system providing anti virus software and regarding the software as a service providing application softwares Google Docs Google Sheets Uh, Lalindi, when it comes to the uh, voice messages, uh, it needs a particular application to uh, communicate with. So it comes with the mobile computing, though. not the mobile communication, right? Uh, like, like SMS, yes, short message service, we can take it as a mobile communication. But voice messages, it need a specific uh, application to do that. Too. Yeah, good point, Lalindi. In SMS, we don't have a voice, but uh, in that case, we are like uh, then short message service, and we bitstream communication. Like when we are doing the when we are having the when we mobile phones at the very first time, the only two facility that we are we were having is the voice calls and the short message service. So that can be category into the, uh, what we call the mobile communication. So it's not uh, like, yeah, saying only the voice is not good. It's better you say voice slash SMS, short messages. Good point, Lalindi. Right, so in, in here, it's better you indicate voice slash SMS. Right, in mobile communication, right? And people, yeah, and in here, if you can just indicate what are the things that they are uh, communicating. So it, uh, they can uh, have audio, Better you have some arrows over here. Indicating that they are going to communicate.
Let me know when you are done, people. Right, okay. Right, let's move forward. Now, the other than the two will have the one fourteen world. Come on, I'm not even at the end of the first lesson. Nikki, they were to get my We didn't went to the third lesson today. Happy next week. We are going to. Uh, like start from the uh, third lesson, right? Uh, which is, which is yeah, we are going to continue. We have already started that. We will continue with the third lesson by next week, right? So here in the, uh, after the cloud computing, we are going to talk about the abstract model of information creation. Now, this is something we already know. We know when data is processed, we are getting information, right? But here, what they are trying to do is, they try to match this, the word system, the common word system with the computer system. Or like in, in other words, they are trying to convince that computer is a system, right? So uh, that is what we call the abstract model. Now in, in abstract model, uh, uh, it describes a particular system is taking an input is processing and providing some output, all right? Now we are going to uh, talk about this system in our seventh lesson in detail, right? Uh, where we are uh, talking about how a system is developed, right? But here it's just a, a, like, like a, a very small picture about the system in this particular point, right? So we can, we can consider lot of things around us as a system, right? So if you, if you simply take a bicycle, we can call it as a system. Why we can call it as a system? In the system definition, uh, the definition says something like this. If it is going to be a system, it needs some things. It should have components, right? And uh, components, they should interact and should interrelate it as well, right? Components should interact and components should interrelate it. 
right? And uh, these components, the interacting interrelated components will work together to achieve a common goal, right? So components will work together to achieve a common goal. If you find, if you can find these characteristics on some particular object, that object can tell or named as a system. Now, let's take the example that we were talking, the bicycle. Now, does bicycle have component, do bicycle have components? It has components, right? It has handle as a component, right? And it has wheels as the component and it has a chassis as a component. It has cogwheels, right? Around the cogwheels, we have a chain, right? Uh, it's, it's a wrong way of drawing that, yeah, like this. Right around the cogwheels, we have a chain, right? And the cogwheels are connected to the pedals. And we are given a seat, right? So these wheels, pedals, cogwheels, handles, and all these things are called the components. And they are interrelated, right? They are interrelated because handle is built to the uh, chassis and uh, uh, but the wheels are being uh, uh, fixed into the chassis with some cog wheels and chains and all these things, right? So they are interrelated. And they are interacting, right? When you are pedaling the uh, pedals, the back wheel of the bicycle is going to get rotated, which will help you to move forward. Right, and uh, if you uh, if you, if you connect a dynamo to your back wheel, and connect the other end to a into a uh, bulb, so it will light up when you are pedaling the bicycle. Right, so there are components which are interrelated as well as interacting. And does the bicycle has a common goal? It is the common goal is like moving from one place to another. That is the common goal, right? So we can take bicycle as a system. So likewise, if these characteristics can be found in any any place, you can call it as a system. And again, if something is qualified as a system, the system is always having something called input. System takes input and then system will process those inputs and system will provide an output. Right? So if you take the bicycle, what is going to be the input for a bicycle? The input is going to be the human energy. Process is going to be what? Converting human energy into kinetic energy, right? Chalaka Shakti ki again. Output is going to be moving, right? So if you take anything, take human respiratory system as an example, input is going to be the air. Right, input is going to be the air. 
process is what? There are several processes, right? The major processes is filtering oxygen from air, right? Actually, the filtering. Output is like oxygen to bloodstream. And rest of the air back to the environment. All right, so likewise, and uh, if we take the computer, does the computer have components? It is, it has many components. It has keyboards, mouse, monitor, systems, uh, uh, system unit. A lot of components are there. Are they interrelated? Yes, they are connected with each other. Are they interacting? Yes, when we press the key on the keyboard, we can see something on the monitor or we can see some command is being executed, right? Do they have a common goal? Yes, they do. What they are doing is creating the information, providing the information, like it will, it will, provide us the information in many different ways. Can be your audio, can be a video, right? Can be a news, right? So anyway, it's processing us the information. So it is can be taken as a system and does the computer has an input process and an output? It is. Charles Babbage were introducing the computer on that particular base, right? So it is taking data as the input, it is processing the data and it will output the information as the output, right? So if you take the computer, so we can match this input is going to be data processing, data is processed and the output is going to be the information so we can confirm it's going to be a system when we are considering about the computer right terunada yes, sir right great so let's uh, update our short note we can end the session, right? You don't need to draw the bicycle, right? Uh, I can, yes, uh, it would be, uh, it will be a nice one if you draw a bicycle, right? Mm, yeah. And go on from here, right? I'll uh, mark some things. So these are called components.
Uh, moving a little bit upward. If you miss something, just let me know. And if you are done, people, you can leave, right? I'll see you on the next week for the same time, right? For the people who are writing, I'm still here. You can continue, right? Have a nice weekend, people. And we are starting at 11.30, right? So please uh, have it in mind. Right, Nikini, thank you very much. Okay, Sachin Tani, you can leave. Thank you very much, Dua.
Right, Lalindi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that.